Hi everyone, welcome to ACCA Taxation Video Lectures brought to you by AccountantCTube.com. In this video lecture, we are going to start our value added tax, which is also one of the important uh, topics in our ACC taxation exam, be it F6 or P6. Right, so I'm using F6 notes. This lecture is for both F6 and P6 students, although I'm, I'm using the F6 notes. But the same material, most the same material, you can find it in your P6 notes as well. Even though if you can't find the same material in your P6 notes, it is a little bit different, then don't worry uh, because uh, that's fine. All right? So do not, you do not have to worry about that. Uh, but uh, chances are you will find most of the stuff in your P6 notes as well. Right, uh, if you could uh, move to page number 64 of your lecture notes, uh, of your F6 lecture notes, uh, it is value added tax. Right? Now, what is value added tax basically? We have seen different types of taxes in our previous uh, syllabus so far. We have seen income tax, we have seen capital gains tax, then we have seen corporation tax, inheritance tax as well. Now, value added tax is a different tax and in, different in a sense because it is the only tax which is indirectly collected by Chamber Revenue Customs. Now, all of them taxes are paid directly to HM Revenue Customs. It is the only tax which is paid indirectly. So if someone asks you that what is the indirect tax in your syllabus, it is the only uh, tax which is value added tax, uh, which, is, uh, which is indirect tax. Now, value added tax, if you are living in the UK, it will be easier for you to understand because whenever you go to a petrol pump to put some fuel in, uh, you, when you uh, check your invoice, you have paid value added tax on that. Right. Likewise, if you go to the market, if you buy something which is subject to value tax, you will have paid value tax on that. If you say, for example, pay something, some amount to your solicitor in the UK or your chartered accountant, uh, they charge value tax on their services as well. So basically, in the UK, most goods and services are subject to 20% value tax, which is a standard rate of uh, value tax in the UK. Although it is standard rate of 20%, but it doesn't mean that it will apply to all of the goods and services in the UK. So on most of goods and services, you will have to pay a tax at the rate of 20%. Uh, so you will have to pay value added tax. Right? So these are, I was talking about the services which are standard rated. So it is 20% standard rated. Now, these are not only services which are in, under the scope of value tax. There are a couple of other as well known as zero rated supplies or exempt supplies right now exempt supplies like the name says that you do, will not have to pay any value tax on that uh, and you can't charge as a supplier you can't charge value tax on the exempt supplies now zero rated supply is a little confusing because uh, although it is a supply uh, but it says that it's zero rated which means you will ch charge value tax but at the rate of zero percent it is a funny thing that you are charging VAT at the rate of 0%, which tells me it is exactly the same like exempt, isn't it? Under exempt rules, you can't charge value tax because it is exempt, whereas uh, under zero rated, you are charging at the rate of 0%, which is exactly the same thing, isn't it? But there is a little difference I will explain to you later on. Uh, but for now, if you just uh, open your notes and see what goods and services are in the standard rated supplies, what are in the zero rated supplies and what are in the exempt supplies. Now as you can see on your video screen, uh, VAT is charged on uh, taxable supplies of goods and services in the UK by taxable person in the course of their businesses. Now say for example if you are doing a business in the UK and you are registered for value to tax as well, so you will be charging value tax on the goods and services which you are providing. Now it, these uh, goods and services will be divided into three sections. One are standard rated as I explained you earlier, 20% rate on most goods and services supplied. Zero rated which is at the rate of 0%. Now these are the things on which it will be 0%. On drugs and medicine, non luxury food, books, children clothes and footwear, beverage and water services. So these are subject to 0% value tax which means you do not have to charge any. Uh, exempt supplies, uh, sorry, exempt supplies on the other hand um, uh, are uh, bank, banking services, uh, betting and gaming, and then insurance, non-profit making education, and the health services. Gambling comes under the same uh, category as well. 
so which is exempt. Right, so these are diff three different categories, standard rated, zero rated, and exempt supplies. Right, so you'll have to memorize it that uh, examiner might ask you, uh, examiner might give you, in, especially in F6 uh, uh, exam, it might give you a question and it, it might list some of the items, excuse me, some of the items in the question and he ask you that which one of these are at the rate of, which one of these are at the rate of 20% and which one, which one of these are zero rated and which one of these are exempt supplies so you will have to identify so you will have to memorize it especially if you are F6 student not so important for P6 though right then after that if you see <coughs> excuse me uh, how to calculate tax and how do we pay to HM Revenue Customs as I said, we will be talking about only the 20% rate, which is standard rate. So we'll take basically the sales amount, which will be given to us in the question. So if I give you a sales amount of 100 pounds, I ask you the VAT rate is 20%. Could you please tell me how much is the VAT? Yeah, you're right, it is 20 pounds. I hope at this level you can calculate it, be it you F6 or P6 student. Uh, so if, uh, you know, the amount of uh, goods or services is 100 pounds, if I ask you tax rate is 20 percent you can calculate it so 100 times uh, 20 over 100 it is uh, 20 percent now it won't be as simple in uh, f6 as well the uh, examiner will give you amount which will include tax amount in itself and examiner will say tell me the amount how much is tax in this amount so if i give you 120 pounds and if i say 20 percent tax is included in that how would you calculate so you will multiply by 20 over 120. So that is how you calculate the amount of value of tax. Like, <coughs> excuse me, likewise, if I give you amount of 120 again, and if I ask how much is tax exclusive amount, so you will multiply, uh, I mean, you will take the amount 120, multiply by 100 over 120, which will give you the amount, uh, tax exclusive amount. So that's basically the simple calculation. I, um, I, I, I know that most of you will be able to do that. I'm just explaining you because some of you might not be able to understand that, so that's why I'm just explaining it. Right, so uh, that's how we'll calculate the VAT basically because the uh, VAT rate is 20%. But as I said earlier as well, in the question, examiner will give you a scenario. So there will be few purchases, few sales. So some of them will be VAT inclusive, some of them will be VAT exclusive. So you must be able to calculate VAT in, uh, in all of them ways. Right now, the VAT as a business, uh, if I charge VAT and on, on my goods and services, if I am selling my goods and services, if I charge VAT on that, that is known as output VAT. Right now, the goods are going, goods or services basically are going outwards, so they're going out, so that's why it is output VAT. Uh, I'm just telling you this thing to just make yourself. Uh, to, to just uh, make it easy for you to remember so if if you want to uh, memorize it like this if you're f6 student especially so uh, if you uh, if you're selling something goods or services so the VAT which you're charging on that it is called output value tax likewise if you're buying something uh, in the business if you're buying some goods or services if you're paying VAT on that that will be our input VAT uh, which you pay on your purchases right now we will be doing because in our business we will be doing some purchases we'll be doing sales on daily basis now what we do is we'll take output VAT so we'll take all the sales multiplied by 20 or whatever if it is inclusive 20 or 120 if it is not inclusive 20 or 100 so we'll take for all of these sales which we have done so after do, uh, doing that total amount will be our output VAT right sales tax uh, sorry the um, valuated tax on sales right likewise after doing that we'll have to see how many purchases we did during the period so we'll have to see how much VAT we have paid on that so if it is inclusive 20 or 120 if it is exclusive 20 or 100 right so we'll have to do that as well so total amount will be our uh, input VAT which you have paid on purchases so then we have to net off how much we have to pay to HM Revenue Custom because the because the VAT which we have collected on sales so say for example if I am selling this iPad assuming it is subject to 20% VAT if I am selling it as part of my business I'm charging 20% VAT on that but this VAT is not coming in my pocket that will go to HM Revenue Custom 
right? So that's why I will do all sales, then multiply by VAT rate, total amount of VAT, that is output VAT, which I have to pay to HM Revenue Customs, right? Now on the other hand, if we see the VAT which I have paid on my purchases. So when I was customer, I went to a shop as part of my business. So I went to my supplier, I bought some stuff. He charged 20% VAT as well. Now that VAT is not going into his pocket, that VAT is also going to the HM Revenue and Customs pocket. So I will total my input VAT as well. Then I will net off the both amounts. So how much I owe to HM Revenue Custom, how much HM Revenue Custom owe me. So the net amount, so output VAT less input VAT, that is the amount which I have to pay to, pay to HM Revenue and Custom. Now sometimes we have overpaid in shape of input VAT and we have collected less amount. In that case, HM Revenue and Custom owes us money, so we will collect from HM Revenue and Customs. Right? Now in the notes it says the exempt supplies cannot recover input and must shoulder the burden of VAT paid. Uh, so if you are exempt supplier, uh, so if you are dealing with exempt supplies which are listed above, uh, so you, you will be exempt supplier because you are uh, doing business in banking services or insurance or health services. So if you are one of them, so chances are you will be exempt supplier and you cannot recover value of tax. So that is a disadvantage uh, of uh, uh, being the exempt supplier. And if we talk about the difference, because earlier I was telling you what would be the difference between exempt and zero rate supplies. So that is the difference between exempt and zero, zero rate supplies basically. That under exempt supplies, if you are an exempt supplier and you are doing business in one of the categories of banking and insurance and all that, then you will be exempt supplier and you will not be able to claim input VAT even though it doesn't matter how much purchases you are how much input VAT you uh, you have to claim from HM Revenue Custom, you will not be able to claim because you are exempt supplier. On the other hand, if you are a zero rate supplier, if you're doing business in the zero rate supplies, then you will be able to, uh, uh, you know, the claim HM Revenue Customs, claim from HM Revenue Custom the VAT which you have paid in shape of input VAT, right? So that is the basic difference. So if you're a zero rate supplier, you will be able to claim HM, uh, you will be able to claim the value tax. However, if you're a um, exempt supplier, you won't be able to. Now, some uh, um, normally what happens is that you are doing the, uh, you are selling both, uh, you know, the uh, standard rated and zero rated suppliers as well, and exempt suppliers. So you might be selling all of them, but that is outside scope of F6. So we won't be looking at that in this video lecture. Right, you know, after that it says that value of supply, we have already seen that, that how to calculate that exclusive and that inclusive amount, so I won't get go into much details of that. Right, now as I was, I was uh, saying to you earlier, if I am doing business, I will be charging value of tax at the rate of 20%. But who will be charging VAT? Someone who is registered for VAT. Someone, only someone who is registered for VAT them person will be uh, that person will be charging value tax not everyone can collect tax not everyone will be charging value tax only someone who is registered for value tax now how can we get registered there are certain conditions and there are certain criteria some first one is compulsory registration now if this condition applies you do not have a choice you will have to get registered for value tax so it is compulsory registration and there are two tests uh, one is historic, which means history, which means previous, uh, in the past. And one is a, a compulsory registration future test, so which will be for the future uh, days. Now the historic test is for previous 12 months. So if in the previous 12 months, if uh, your turnover exceeds 85,000 pounds, if in the previous 12 months your turnover exceeds 85,000 uh, pounds, then you will have to get registered. You will have to. Right, so these are taxable supplies, which means uh, you know the standard rate supplies and uh, you know the zero rate supplies. So if you're doing both business of standard rate and zero rate supplies, so total of standard and zero rate, if it is eighty-five thousand pounds or more than that in the previous twelve months, then you will have to get registered for value tax under the uh, historic test of compulsory registration. Right. Now the person must notify HM Revenue Custom within 30 days and will be registered from 1st of next month. 
Right. And then after that, it says a compulsory uh, compulsory registration, which is the future test. Now, this future test is for 30 days. So, if any time you believe that in the next 30 days, your turnover will exceed 85,000 pounds, then you must must get registered for failure tax. Right. So these were the ones compulsory registration that you will have to get registered. You do not have any choice. Now, uh, I know that tax is a bad thing. I mean, no one likes the tax. You are just paying it because you have to. If you can avoid, you will avoid maybe. So uh, sometimes that uh, people voluntarily, uh, voluntarily get registered for value tax as well. Now, just see beneath that, it is voluntary registration. Someone who, is, who will say that I want to get registered myself. So someone will bring himself forward and they say, I, I want to get registered for value tax. So who will be them angels? for HM Revenue Customs. So the, them are not so good people. They are pretending to be good people because obviously there is a benefit for them to get registered for value tax because only uh, someone who is get registered for value tax, only them people will be able to claim uh, that which they have paid on input tax, right? So only the peop person who is registered for VAT, only them registered persons will be able to claim input VAT. If you're not registered for value tax, you will not be able to claim. Now, if someone who is not registered for VAT, but then he thought I should get registered for VAT because my I'm purchasing a lot of stuff, I'm paying a lot of amount in my in shape of input tax, so I should get registered for uh, I, I should get registered for value tax because I will be able to claim from HM Revenue Customs. So that would be the reason if uh, someone would be willing to get registered for value tax. So a person may decide to become even uh, be become registered even if the, his taxable turnover falls before. The, falls below the registration limit, it will be advantageous to a trader as only a registered person can recover input tax, uh, input tax uh, uh, he pays on purchases. Right? Now after that it is a group registration. Sometimes uh, if one company is controlled by another company or if I c control two companies or there's some other scenarios as well, in them cases uh, two or more companies can uh, register for group registration so what would happen is that that will be one registration for the whole group so uh, they will reduce their administration cost because they will appoint one representative member so if there are say for example four companies uh, they have joined together to make a group registration for value tax purposes then they will decide them four companies will decide that one of them will be a representative member. Now that representative member will be responsible for uh, submission of VAT and paying the VAT liabilities. Although all individual persons will be separately liable as well, but that person who is a representative member, that will be responsible for submission of value tax. All right? And now, uh, companies under common control may apply for group registration. Two or more companies are eligible to be treated member of the group, provided each of them is established in the UK. Only the companies which are established in the UK will be eligible. Now, what are the conditions? Uh, one condition is that it is established in the UK and one of them controls each other. So one is subsidiary of another or one person, individual or holding company controls all of them. So if I hold many companies, I can be, or if a company holds many companies, then can register uh, for group registration. Two or more persons carrying on a partnership control all of them. So if I and my uh, other partner, we are two partners and we are, uh, our partnership owns uh, different companies. In that case as well, we can register our partnership uh, for the group registration. What would be the effect and advantages of group registration? Each VAT member, uh, each VAT group member, each VAT group must appoint representative member who must ac uh, account for the VAT uh, group's output, output tax and input tax, thus simplifying the VAT accounting and allowing payment and repayment of the VAT to be netted off. So what would happen is that the representative member will be able, uh, will be liable to submit the VAT also to make the payments as well. So what they would do is that the representative member take the total amount of input VAT of all of the groups and total amount of uh, the output VAT of all of the group, net of the whole amount and then the pay, pay to HM Revenue Custom or claim from HM, HM Revenue Custom. Any supply of goods or services by member of the group to another member of the group will be uh, at, the, at uh, no rate of VAT, so there won't be any charging of VAT within the group. So then group, four companies were registered for group value tax. If one company sells anything to the other company, they won't be charging any value tax. And after that, it says any, uh, any application to create, terminate, add, or remove a company from that group 
This could be made at any time. Right, then, and another condition is not um, listed here, which is, as I said to you earlier as well, that although the representative member is responsible for the submission of that, and also for the uh, submission of the pay payments, but each member of the group will be separately liable as well. So they will be liable for the payments to HM Revenue Custom, uh, and also that they will have to determine that how much they have to receive from the representative member and how much they owe to representative member. So they will be separately responsible. Right, and uh, after that, uh, that was our registration basically. How can we register uh, and we can register? Now let's look at the deregistration. Sometimes we are not happy with the registration and we want to get deregistration. We want to get deregistered for valid tax. So what would be the circumstances? So first of all is compulsory deregistration. De so if you are no longer doing uh, a standard rated or zero rated supply, so you are no longer dealing with the taxable supplies, then you will have to get registered. So you haven't got any choice. Right? So that would be compulsory deregistration. De when you are not dealing with the uh, taxable supplies, which are zero rated and zero rated and standard rated, so if you're not doing any uh, anything like that, then you will have to get registered. A trader must notify within with 30 days following that day ceasing to make taxable supplies. So if you have ceased making taxable supplies today, you have 30 days to inform to HM Revenue Custom that you are no longer dealing with the taxable supplies and you will be get registered and uh, deregistered. Then the second one is the voluntarily uh, deregistration. Uh, if you can satisfy HM Revenue Custom that uh, you are uh, you know the taxable supplies will not exceed 83,000 pounds in the following one year period in that case as well you will uh, get deregistered voluntarily right so if it is 83,000 pounds or less than that taxable supplies in the next 12 months then you will get deregistered and now uh, although you can you can you were previously registered for value tax so you were able to claim uh, you were able to claim value tax on the purchases now say for example if I started my business and uh, in, the, in the start of the business uh, I was going to purchase a, uh, uh, purchase a expensive machinery. So if I was going to purchase some expensive machinery which were not only one piece of plant machinery, there were few of them or a lot of them sometimes. So what would I do is I would get VAT registered. So when I will get VAT registered, uh, whatever I have purchased in the, in the shape of plant machinery, I am paying VAT on that. So the, that huge chunk of amount which I have paid in shape of value tax, so that will be recoverable from HM Revenue Customs because I am registered for that. Now, after purchasing that, I got registered before purchasing, so I got registered, then purchased the plant machinery, and shortly after that, I got deregistered for value tax purposes. Reason why I got registered was because I did not have any need to register. I voluntarily registered. But reason I registered for value tax was to just purchase these machineries and then claim from HM Revenue Custom whatever we have paid in shape of input tax on them plant and machinery. Right? So it can happen that I purchase plant and machinery, I only got registered for purchase of them plant and machinery because that was a huge amount of value tax which I hired which I had to pay on that. So after purchasing, I have recovered from HM Revenue Custom, then shortly after that I got deregistered. Right now, HM Revenue and Custom are not stupid; they are clever as well. So in that case, HM Revenue and Custom says: so if you got deregistered and if you have claimed any input VAT on the stuff which you have purchased, you will have to pay it back to HM Revenue and Customs. So that's what it says in the notes: consequences of deregistration. So what would be the consequences? So you will have to pay um, value tax on all of the stock which you have, on which you have claimed HM Revenue and Customs. However, if it is less than one thousand pound, then you would not then you do not have to do that right so where is it a consequence of uh, deregistration yep. right so it says on deregistration that is chargeable on all stocks and capital assets so just read it yourself it is exactly the same thing which I've just told you now after that it says VAT period now VAT period is uh, for which you have to submit VAT and you have to make payment so normally VAT period is for one quarter so which is three months so you will have to pay uh, you will have to submit return for every quarter and then make payment as well so that is VAT period so VAT period also known as tax period is a period covered by the VAT return it is usually three calendar months which is a quarter of VAT return along with the payment must be submitted 
uh, and that must be paid electronically within one month and seven days right so just highlight this figure uh, sorry not figure the date so one month and seven days uh, after the end of the VAT period so that is a payment date for value to tax right so uh, that is very very important from exam point of view examiner might give you a date uh, examiner might set you a question in which he asks uh, that that is a VAT period tell me when would uh, he be required to pay make the payment so it is one month and seven days after the end of VAT period a certain businesses may submit annual VAT return uh, under the annual accounting scheme. So there are three schemes which are part of our syllabus, cash accounting scheme, annual accounting scheme and flat rate scheme which we will see in our next video. So uh, normally what happens is that you have to submit the VAT return every quarter. But if you join annual accounting scheme which we will see in our next video, if you join annual accounting scheme in that scheme you will have to submit only one return which is annually. So that's what it says. Uh, then it says refund of overpaid VAT. There are four years time limit. Uh, you have right to uh, reclaim overpaid VAT. So a uh, four year is a limit in which you have to do so. Right after that, it's a tax point. That is also very, very important, especially for F6 students and also important for P6 as well but especially for F6 students. So you'll have to determine that what is a tax point. If you have determined tax points, only then you will be able to uh, figure out that in which uh, VAT period does it fall. According to that, you will have to make the payments. Right, so what is the tax point basically? Now, the basic tax point, first of all, it's a basic tax point. If you want to write down, you can do so. Uh, otherwise, the information is given to you in the notes anyway. But if you want to write down, it will make your concepts in a better way. So first is the basic tax point. So basic tax point is whenever I have uh, dispatched my goods and the customer has received the goods. So whenever the customer has received the goods, that is our basic tax point. Right? Now, then it says that if in VAT invoice is issued or payment is received before the basic tax point, then this advance date will become the tax point. Now, say for example, if, you have in, uh, if I have in, uh, issued the invoice before sending the goods, if I have uh, issued the invoice first, then issued the goods, or not the invoice, if I have received advance payment of the goods, advance payment of the goods, and then I dispatch the goods, then this advance date, whenever I have received the money, or whenever I have issued the invoice. So if uh, I in issue the invoice before sending the goods, or receive payment before sending the goods, then this date will become our tax point. So that is our advance date, which will become tax point. So the basic point will not be our basic date, will not be our tax point in that case. And finally it says, if the advance rule does not apply, and if the VAT invoice is issued within 14 days after the basic tax point, then uh, invoice date will become the tax point. So if, in, if say for example, if I have, uh, uh, I have uh, sent the goods to my customer, and after sending the goods, uh, after 14 days I have issued the invoice. So if I issue the invoice after 14 days, then this will become our uh, tax point because uh, if we do not memorize these rules we will not be able to figure out in which uh, tax period we will have to uh, we will have to figure out that we will in which tax year we will have to pay the value tax all right so that is very very important now examiner might set you a question especially in f6 uh, he might give you uh, information about different things like say for example he might give you a scenario where he will be telling you that he has issued invoice on that date he has sent goods on that date, customer has received the goods on this date, then he issued invoice after 14 days. Tell me when is the tax point? So question will be like this. So if you are confident on this topic, you will be easily able to under, uh, you will be easily able to attempt that question. Anyway, if you come to the next question, VAT records. So this is the information which is given to you. So this is the information which you, uh, which you will find on your VAT invoice. Right, so this is the information which you, which is compulsory for uh, for the seller or for the uh, you know the taxable supplier to show on the VAT invoice. So, say for example, if you are living in the UK, if you have any VAT invoice, so you must uh, you, you must have all this information present to you on the VAT invoice. Now, examiner might set you a question and uh, he might present you with a VAT invoice. So that VAT invoice will have few information on that. 
then examiner will say tell me what information is omitted in this VAT invoice and what is which is extra written here which it does not need in the VAT invoice then if you are confident on this topic then you will be able to uh, you know the spot the mistakes which are in that VAT invoice right so if you go to a petrol pump say for example to put some fuel in ask for a VAT invoice if they issue a VAT invoice then check all this information will be given to you there if it if uh, any of the information is missing just tell them that it is not right you must show all of this information tell them that you have studied f6 right so uh, that information uh, full VAT invoice must show all of this information suppliers name address and VAT number of supplier name and address of the customer tax point and invoice number the description of goods type of supply if it is standard rated zero rated or exempt and rate of VAT as well tax exclusive amount of each supply uh, then amount of VAT as well and rate of any cash or settlement discount offered now sometimes we offer discount as well so if you pay within that period I will give you some discount now VAT will be only calculated if the customer has VAT will be only calculated after the uh, discount is uh, taken by the customer so if I offer a discount, if you, if my customer, if if I offer a discount to my customer, that if you pay within 14 days, I will give you a discount. If customer has taken the discount, I will deduct the discount of my price, and on net amount, then I will calculate the VAT on that. Now, if the customer hasn't taken any discount, of course, I will not have to uh, take the discount into consideration. Right, and after that, it says that all VAT records must be retained for six years by a registered person. And then the treatment of discount, I've already explained to you, if a discount is offered by a prompt payment, then the VAT is accounted for on the price after discount if uh, the discount is actually taken by the customer. If the customer did not take any discount, we will not have to worry about it. So we'll give uh, consideration to the discount. Relief for bad debt, sometimes what happens is that, now what normally happens basically, when I, uh, when I issue the invoice to my customer, the customer might pay you after two months or three months. So in that invoice, I have already charged VAT. Now when I charge invite, that is not going in my pocket, that is going to HM Revenue and Customs pocket. Now that is going to HM Revenue and Customs pocket, but I have to submit the VAT return every quarter. So I might pay to HM Revenue and Customs before customer pays me. So I have paid that VAT to the, uh, to the HM Revenue and Customs, but after few months, I, have, uh, I came to know that the customer is not going to pay me. That customer is a bad debt. Now I've already paid VAT to HM Revenue Customer, but the customer is not going to give me the money. Then in that case, I will have to ask HM Revenue Customer that please give me that amount because I did not did not get from the customer anyway. So that is a, uh, you know the relief for bad debt. Normally VAT output is accounted for when an invoice is, is issued. If sales become bad debt, the seller has paid VAT to HM Revenue Customer. Uh, and never recovers this from the customer this position is addressed by the seller being able to claim that uh, bad debts relief provided now, there are certain conditions only then I will be able to claim from HM Revenue Customs if six months are elapsed since I have um, given the goods to the customer uh, six months has elapsed since payment from the customer was due uh, and uh, debtor has been written off in your account so uh, it is not uh, present in your accounts. Uh, relief is obtained by adding the VAT element to the input VAT, uh, input tax. So whatever the amount of VAT which you have paid on the, uh, uh, which you have paid on that sales, you have paid that to HM Revenue Customs. So that amount will be added in your input tax. So you will give yourself relief in that way. So you will not go to HM Revenue Customs pay me that amount. So you just write it in your input VAT and uh, set off the net amount because you will be doing the business anyway. So that will go into your input tax. Right then, after that it's uh, imports, exports, ex acquisitions and dispatches. Now I hope at this level you know that uh, exports are better for a country, aren't they? So what are exports? Whenever I'm selling something outside my country, that is export. Now for our tax purposes, for especially UK tax purposes, export means that we are selling something which is outside country but also outside European Union. The European Union is a big area with many so many different countries so whenever I am selling something uh, I am selling outside European Union right so that is known as export. So what does export mean for F6 and P6 purposes that whenever I am selling something I am selling outside European Union that is export.
right? Now, of course, export is good, so we do, will not we will not charge any value tax on that. Right, so that's what it says. The term export refers to the goods sold to the countries outside the European Union. These are rated as zero rated supplies. Right, so exports are the goods which I'm selling outside the European Union. Them are at the rate of zero rated, so we do not have to charge any VAT. Now, dispatches, dispatches for, our, for our taxation purposes is something when I'm selling something to uh, the country within the European Union. So if I'm selling something to a country within the European Union, that is also better for my country because it is going from my country, I'm selling something, I'm giving money to my country. So that is also good, just like exports. So exports are something outside the European Union and uh, dispatch is when I'm selling something within the European Union. So dispatches again are zero rated supplies because I am selling something. Now the import term opposite to export, import means when I'm importing something to my country, when I'm bringing something to my country, I am paying to, to, the, to my uh, seller which is in other countries, so which is, that is not good for our country, right, because I am paying for that goods which I am bringing from outside my country. Now for our uh, tax, tax question, for our tax purposes, F6 or P6, uh, you know, the acquisition means when I'm buying something from the country within European Union and import means when I'm buying something that from the country outside European Union. So if I'm buying from outside European Union, that is import. If I'm buying within European Union, that is acquisition. Now both of them are not good, but if we look at import first, so how we do it? The term import refers to the goods purchased uh, with the countries outside European Union. These are taxed as standard rated or zero rated supplies as you would have taxed in the UK. So you will have to see in the UK, whatever good we, you are importing, so you will have to determine in the UK if it is standard rated supplies in the UK or zero rated supplies in the UK. So according to that, you will have to charge VAT on that. Right, so if it is standard rated, you will have to charge it at the rate of 20%. If it is zero rated, you will have to charge it at the rate of 0%. Now the term acquisition is when you buy from the country within the European Union. Now there is an agreement between the European Union countries including United Kingdom uh, for the free movement of the goods and services and people as well that they can move freely within the European Union countries. Although uh, you know, the United Kingdom is soon leaving the European Union because of the Brexit, uh, Brexit referendum. <coughs> So they, are, they will soon leave the United Kingdom, but they are still part of it. So we will consider the current rules, which means that they can move freely within the European Union. Now because of them rules, HM, uh, the HM Revenue and Custom is bound that they cannot collect VAT from the, uh, from the purchases which are being made from the country within the European Union. Because of them agreement of the European Union countries, we cannot charge VAT even if we are buying something from the country within the European Union. So although we cannot charge VAT, but what we do is for to, we have to satisfy our country's rules as well. We have to satisfy England, uh, uh, English rules as well, United Kingdom rule, uh, rules as well. So what we do is we will charge VAT as we do in our UK goods and services. If it is standard rated, we will add the rate of standard rated. If it is zero rated, we will charge at the rate of zero rate. We will charge that as input VAT because we are purchasing it. But we have to set off, we will charge the same amount as output VAT as well. So we'll write same amount in input VAT, we'll write same amount in export, uh, uh, output VAT. So the net figure is going to be zero. So by putting input VAT, we are satisfying our local rules. By putting output VAT, we are satisfying European Union rules as well that we are not charging you anything. We're just satisfying HM Revenue Customs, right? So if you are buying something from the country within the European Union, you will uh, charge VAT at the rate of whatever the good is. If it is standard rated, at the rate of standard rate. If it is zero rated, at the rate of zero rate. Uh, we'll charge that amount uh, in input VAT, and we'll charge same amount. We'll put same amount in the export, uh, you know, output VAT as well. So the net effect is going to be zero, right? So that is our uh, imports, exports, acquisitions, and disposals. Right now, on the next page, it says a deduction of input VAT. Now, for input VAT to be deductible, the person must be a registered person, and he must hold VAT invoices of the supplies made to him. The distinction between capital and revenue expense does not apply. So we all know we we know this information already. I've already explained you this information in a better way. That uh, yeah, you know the VAT uh, only only the person who is a uh, only the person who is a registered for value tax only that person will be able to claim. 
value tax. If you're not registered for value tax, you will not be able to claim it. Right, and the, there is a certain type of value tax which is not uh, uh, which is not recoverable. Right, so that is not deductible uh, uh, input VAT. So what is that? The following input VAT is not deductible. VAT incurred on the purchase of motor cars uh, wholly for business purposes is not deductible. So if you have purchased a motor car which is not wholly for business purposes, which is partly for business, partly for private, so that is not deductible. That is cost of the car. However, if you have done any repairs, doesn't matter if it is private or, uh, or, or the business use, the whole cost of the repairs is deductible. And after that it says VAT, uh, VAT incurred on the fuel for business purposes is deductible as input VAT. So if you have fuel, if you are doing the business and you're putting some fuel in that and you are using that car for the business purposes, that fuel uh, can be deductible as input VAT. But if the fuel is supplied by the business for an individual's private use, if there is an employee, say for example, then the business may claim input VAT. So you can claim input VAT in that case as well, even if it is a private use, like employee, but must account for the output VAT according to the scale chart given you in the, in the exam. So you'll put input VAT, but you will also put ex, uh, output VAT as well according to the scale given to you in the exam. So examiner will tell you that that is a scale <coughs> which you can use as input VAT. Right, and then after that it says VAT incurred on the business entertainment to for the UK customers. So if you have UK customer and you are giving some entertainment, you're giving some gift, you're giving some vouchers, you're giving some free, uh, free products. So uh, if you're entertaining UK customers, uh, it is also not deductible. VAT on non-business items is also not deductible. And after that it says uh, pre-registration input VAT. So say for example, if I am doing business, but I'm not registered for value tax, uh, but I have done some purchases. So I have done some purchases of goods and services. Then after a few months, I got registered for value tax. Now at the time when I got registered for value tax, few months back, I had purchased few goods and services. Now I can claim uh, input VAT, which I had incurred few months ago. So that is called as pre-registration input VAT. Now for goods and services, it's different. So the goods which we have purchased, there is certain different conditions and for the services it's different conditions. So for goods, it says the goods must be acquired for business purposes and should not be sold or consumed prior to registration. So you, the goods must be in, in your stock and it, it must not have acquired four years prior to registration. So you must have uh, purchased within four years uh, from the time of registration and them goods will be in your stock that are not used. All right, and them were for business purposes. Likewise, for services as well, that services are for business purposes, uh, and uh, the sub services are supplied within six months period. So for services, it's six months, and for goods, it's uh, yeah, four years. For both of them are for business purposes, and for goods, goods must be in your stock. This is also very, very important for F6 and P6 purposes. Pre-registration in Pervat, examiner often asks you about that. He will give you a scenario. It will give you some goods which he have purchased uh, before registration. And then he will give you some uh, services as well. Then he will ask you that how much is the amount which he can recover. Then you will have to determine that how, when he purchased it, when he got registered, when he was provided the services and all that. Then on the next page, if you uh, move, it is a uh, penalty which are given to us. Now, first of all, it says default submits a late VAT return, a submit uh, or submits or, it, uh, or submits a return on time but makes a late payment for VAT. Uh, then a default has occurred. In this case, HM Rent Custom may issue a surcharge liability notice. So they are not so cruel. They will issue you a notice first. So that is known as surcharge liability notice. Now, if during that period, during that notice period, if you again do that omission, if you again miss a payment or miss a submission of VAT, then you will have to pay penalty, right? So if it is a first default, then it will be default. So if it is a first default, how much is the penalty? 2%, 2% of surcharge as a percentage of VAT outstanding at the due date. Now, if it is a second default, I mean, if you are doing for the second time, then it is 5%, likewise 10% and 15%. Right? Now after that it says penalty for errors. Penalty for errors will be exactly like you have seen in our income tax. And interest on uh, underpaid tax or uh, unpaid tax. Interest is charged on the VAT which you have paid after the due date. If you are late, uh, so you will have to pay interest on that. Right? So that's it for our this video. Uh, that is end of our uh, basic value tax. 
So that was most of the stuff I told you already that how the examiner can uh, examine this topic in the, in, the, in the exam. We will, however, do some questions. Then you will understand this concept, these concepts in a better way. So we'll do some questions in our next video or the video after that. Then you will understand these concepts in a better way. I will see you in the next video then. Goodbye.